I'm Tommy G. I'm in Gary, Indiana. I'm at an abandoned bank vault. Let's see what's inside. America's Gangsters Ghost Town. Yeah, yes, sir. What well, SOB? I never counted a favor. If you was loyal to me, I'll get arrested. I'll put it up in the box like broken bricks. May 25th, 2004. Almost 20 years ago, someone was here. I really live what I put in my songs. The rest of them flex for the lights on the. At one time in history, Gary, Indiana was a booming American city. It was founded in 1906 by U.S. Steel as a site for their new plant, Gary Works. By the 1920s, it was a place where black Americans and European immigrants came to seek prosperity working in the steel mills. At its peak in the 1960s, over 178,000 people called Gary home. Then things got bad. The steel mills closed, jobs went overseas, and Gary began to deteriorate. By the 90s, it became one of America's murder capitals. And by 2021, the population had dropped to 68,000. Currently, a third of the homes in Gary are abandoned and the crime rate remains high. We hit the streets with gangster rapper SOBOD and his crew. Here's what he sounds like. I've been dropping shit, going to go too fast, don't feel like stopping it. Doing all of that warfare through that phone, what got your partner hit? Bad as fuck, I've been stepping on shit, ain't had no pot to piss. That AI pistol can't go in my pants, I bet the Glock will fit. Join us as we explore America's gangster ghost town, Gary, Indiana. So we're here, it's a beautiful morning here in Gary, Indiana. And we're here to meet some local rappers are going to join us for the exploration. Good to meet you. Good to meet you, my boy. This is Zach. Z Sitchy. AKA SOB Zach. And folks, today we got. It's the word, Big General, SOBLD. How y'all coming, man? Okay, so we're exploring America's Gangster Ghost Town. That's what I'm calling Gary, Indiana. What do you think about that description? I f with it. Yeah? Yeah. You think it's it an accurate description? Yeah, yeah it matches. It matches for sure. Describe Gary in three words. I don't three know. Words. Scary, 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 and scary, scary, scary. You know? So have you guys ever gone exploring in your city like this? Nah. Hell no. We'd be put up, bro. We just cause crime and get up out of here <laughs> <laughs> we got my boy uh, my other artist Gerald coming okay and that Draco in yeah I need some type of weaponry yeah I'm leaving, I, I'm leaving too so y'all good okay so that's another home, thing bro. there's a lot of people that I feel like don't want to like police I think are an asset to a community you know what I mean yep like what is your take on that they not an asset to no this community. Hell no. Nah. Okay, so if someone is shooting up your mom's house, don't you think you want to call the police? No, nah, hell no. Nah. No? They not gonna come. My friend got shot in my front yard. The police ain't come till he died, like 20 what? minutes later. Why do you think that is? Because it just happened so much. They not trying to really save nobody. They trying to eliminate the problem. So they'll let you die before they save you. If they save you, then there's more bullshit bound to keep happening because of the type of person you is. If you die, they ain't got to worry about bullshit. No more. Where I look at right now is like police is like one of the most hated jobs in America right now. You know what the number one cause of death for police officers? Yeah. Super what the fuck? What they see every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel like, so yes, there are some shit police officers we gotta hold accountable. I feel like no one's gonna wanna be a police officer anymore and things are just gonna get crazy. Yeah, yeah, me too. What do you think it would take to get more black dudes being a police officer? Education. Like, yeah. that's it. Because I think a police, a good police officer is a community police officer. Like, they're playing, they're Basketball. playing football with the kids. Yeah, the police yeah, out here named wrong. Officer that's Tatum. I got to shout him out. Officer that, Tatum, we f with you. You know we so f with you. I want to hit him with that look. Officer Tatum been coming out here playing b basketball with us. He a real community cop. He look out for the kids. Let people go, all type of stuff. He pull you over. He'll give you a chance, a warning. Like, he's not going to hold you up for some bullshit. Like, yeah. oh, you have a half a gram of weed. Like, he's not going to make it a he scene. He's going to throw it on the ground and crush it and let us go. I'm okay. telling you. What's going on, big dog? I'm Tommy. Hey, how you doing? I'm nice Gerald. SOB Gerald. Nice to meet y'all. How y'all doing? All right, so we're with the SOB crew. Let's explore Gary, Indiana. Damn. Damn. Huh. This is a church or a school. It's a church. Bro, it's a noose over there. So guys, at, at one point, Gary is one of the fastest growing cities in America. It was booming. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys remember, like, do you have grandparents that told you about that or that can remember those times? My sister yeah. told me in like, 63 it was. It ain't been like that for the longest. I feel like in like, 10 years after 63, that's when stuff started going downhill. Like when it became the murder capital and stuff, that's when stuff started going downhill. So what, did that, what was it like growing up in Gary, Indiana? That's Fun. I ain't gonna lie, it's not like Chicago, but it's like you forced to um, bond with everybody around it's you. It's a good so, experience. Yeah, yeah. Good experience. definitely. Yeah. Should we check out the upstairs? Yeah, we can go upstairs. Let's see it, let's Come check on. it out.
How old y'all think this building is though? A hundred? Eighty years old maybe? Eighty? Point, this is once a grand church. church no. That is something to think about. At one point, this was a community staple. This is where people got married. This is where people had uh, their kids See if people got married baptized. Look how big it is. You could tell shit. It's great. Yeah, and now right there. there. So what do you think like it does to someone's psyche growing up and they just everywhere they look, they see decay. That shit make you like. That motivates you. Yeah, it like, it, it turns you to a different person. Like, you know, you got to get out this environment. So that's why I took, you know, I looked around me when I was like 14 and my family, they, the, the environment made my family change too. Like we wasn't really how family was supposed to be. We was the two and separating and, and that turned us against each other. So once you got more and you could do more for yourself and your family, that only brings more happiness. So that's what I, he behind me playing, ain't he? Yeah. No, I was just seeing. So big girl how does right something there. like this collapse? You think? We getting older and older. Yeah, the decay and shit. All the rain getting inside, probably getting wet and stuff. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is a metaphor for life. Like if you don't keep things built up and maintained, everything collapses. It could yeah, be yeah. your career, your family, your city. If you don't put in the work to keep it good, it's gonna all. Collapse. Oh, yeah. All right, let's find a basement entrance that's not gonna collapse on us. Because if there's ghosts in here, they live in the basement. I was researching ghosts the other day. So our mission is either to go to the basement or go to the top. I'm trying to see some scary shit. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Let's go hunt for ghosts right now. Come on. Bro, there's a room called hell. What? I feel like out of the group, you're the one that's most likely to go there, so why don't you lead the way? Fuck it. <laughs> oh, fuck no, bro. Oh, shit. Yeah, we're gonna die. I mean, if I was stuck here for eternity, I would think that's hell too. So do any of you guys feel any paranormal activity down here? A couple spider webs. A little bit of a weird, weird urge. A weird urge. His flashlight is his gun. <laughs> this bitch has got some power to it. Oh, it looks like it. Oh, no, I heard that shit. That shit scared the fuck out of me. Y'all heard them talking? Outwork is outside. They're speaking Spanish. They got the Spanish language. Yeah, we gotta go though. It's, it's Mexicans. Ghost, dude. I'm gonna have to punch one of them and they shit. They might try and um, Man. search <laughs> us with gloves on and stick a finger up our butt. Nah, 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 nah. nah, nah. nah. 10 million. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Should we go to the bank? There's yeah. A, there's an Come abandoned on, bank. Okay. Fuck it. It is? Yeah. Let's do it. We can uh, get into okay. the safe. We at the bank. Let's do it. We need the vault. I got a crowbar in the trunk. Yeah, hey, I got a shovel and a rope. I oh. sound like he's definitely the crazy guy of the crew, huh? <laughs> so like, I like seeing this when you drive around, you see all these fresh brick buildings, nice developments. Like it does show that some of the city investment is actually working and making it nicer. And like, if you grew up on, like look, look how much block by block. One block, boom, ready. The other block, totally abandoned. You guys ever heard of black mold before? You breathe it in, it's not supposed to be too good for you out here. Okay, to the people back home, how will you describe the smell? It smell like pneumonia. <coughs> Come on, I smell like, it smells like that. You don't go back home. Guys, the vault to the bank is right here. What the fuck? That boy Tommy G found us in a vault. Let's see if we can make sense of any of this. Oh, I think there must have been a fire recently in here. Yeah, that's why I was thinking. That's, that's what this yeah. Smell this, smell this. That definitely is like recent. Yeah, that's burnt. Yeah, 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 yeah that's smell like burnt. Yeah. Somebody's so, probably trying to burn this bitch. Someone's trying to keep warm in here. Maybe. They might be, bro. Oh yeah, look at all that. Some, someone definitely lit this all up. So these used to be safety deposit boxes. So if you were happening, you'd put some cash in here. You might put a gun in here. So look how, dude, this used to be like, I bet you like back in the day, like 1960s and Gary, this is, if you were a baller, you put your money in here. We got a little comic uh, newspaper. Oh, that'll probably tell us the date. Let's see when this is from. What we got? Bro, they just got a bag of paper. May 25th, 2004. Almost 20 years ago, someone was here. Damn, somebody was here reading. Yeah. And there's like yellow splotches on there. Awesome. Awesome. Wait, eight minimum wage is 825. I thought it was 725. Yeah. They bumped it up. Yeah, 725. 725. Yeah, $7 so can you imagine doing 40 hours a week? What are you making? Like, like $300 a check. My cousin be uh, making minimum wage. How do people live off of that? Check. He don't. Check. He be living with his mama. How much does rent cost out here? 1200 for oh, yeah. one bedroom. Dang. What? For a studio. Yeah. Man, you can't live by yourself working full time off minimum wage. Mm -mm. Do you think there's an issue with that? Yeah. And what do you think should be done? Shit, they should boost that shit up. No, we just need more places built so people can um 
have more place and to more work jobs. at this. And there's year. a cheaper housing. Yeah, yeah. and better, and more jobs. Let's get out of this air. I feel like we're gonna be, our lungs are gonna <laughs> yeah, collapse. Yeah, we might die. Bro. Are your guys' spidey senses tingling a yeah. little bit? A little bit, man. We need, we need the gun up here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the hell is that? Oh, I, got a home I thought it was like a web or something. Well, look at all these files now. Let's see what these files are. Damn, someone's social security number's on this thing. Let me get a picture of that. <laughs> <laughs> this person's date of birth was 11 1832. Okay, Holy shit. What diseases can you get from breathing in air like this? Mesothelioma. We're about to get that if we stay in here longer. All right, guys. Yeah. Let's pop out of this spot. I was fortunate enough to grow up in a really nice suburb, uh, Crystal Lake, Illinois. It was nice. It was just a nice area to grow up. It's hard for me to imagine having kids in an area like this and keeping them positive, keeping them motivated, letting them think that their dreams can come true because like your environment, like they say over and over, product of your environment. And if you're just surrounded by broken down, left behind shit, like it or not, it's going to impact you. It's going to affect the way you think about life. Parts of the city are like a third world country. You gang so much, you keep on sending threats. Let my grizzly act a fool so you don't think you got to wreck. Got some bitches that I love and some I wish I never met. There's some niggas that don't fuck with me and I can't wait to catch them. I've been fucking off my money. I know I'm going to get it back. I'm boots on the ground talking to Gary's residents, talking to people that live here. What is it like living in Gary, Indiana, sir? Man, that's okay, man. I'm really not from Gary, but we buying up all the property in Gary so we can make it beautiful. Oh, yeah. Well, it used to be going so much better, but now it's like people moving out to down to Indianapolis and places like that where all the factories are. I've been living on the same block 56 years. How have you seen a change over time? Well, you see that there was no uh, vacant lots at that time. Like, I see, so, okay, there's obviously some new developments around here that we're looking at in this area, but a lot, a lot of Gary is abandoned and beat down. What does that like? What does that do to someone's psyche? You feel like, or to the psyche of a city? Man, when you don't have a lot of inspiration when you walk outside, people don't really have a lot to hope for. This town is like dead. And look, from uh, 120,000 to 60 or 70,000 population, what's left? You know, we used to. I, I remember when I was young, we used to take our cars to go to Maryville to Wiseway, race cars, come in, go out with the, to the port, and. Friday, Saturday, the cars never slept, man. Up and down the street, we used to have a good time when we was young. Now we have nothing. The, the new generation have nothing, man. So you've seen it go from a good city to abandoned? I wouldn't say it's abandoned, but you know, it, uh, it's not what it used to be. And what has that been like seeing that? Like, what's your commentary or your thoughts on that? Well, everything's got to change over time, okay? No matter what. Everything from, from humans on down, period, you know. Piensa que Estados Unidos es la piazza de oportunidad. Uy, aquí hay muchas oportunidades, la verdad, para todos nosotros los centroamericanos, hispanos y latinoamericanos. Hay personas que viven en Estados Unidos que piensan que es un lugar muy horrible, sin oportunidades. ¿Qué piensas sobre esto? Yo pienso que uno mismo se da la oportunidad, ¿no? No te importa que te estén dando 10 dólares, 12, lo que importa es superarse. Y muchas gracias. Amigo. Muchas gracias. Are you optimistic for the future of Gary? Gary is number one and Gary is going to come back better than any other city in the United States of America, man. Even better than Florida, California, whatever you call it, man. We got the Lake Michigan, man. We got the U.S. Steel, man. Added with to Michigan City and maybe South Bend, even. Gary is the best, man. Gary is number one. U.S. Steel. That's the name of it. U.S. Steel. What do you see for the future of Gary? Either it goes or it dies, period. Make Gary great again. Make Gary that great part. again. <laughs> All right, hey, appreciate you guys. Right, thank, thank you so you. much. Like, what are the top options people want to be in this town? Like, what are the top jobs people want to do? Uh, it ain't that many football uh, and that many schools. You need to go hoop, rap, hoop, rap. Yeah. Yeah. So, is there not a lot of options for kids around here? No, 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 no. Really. So, the school we're about to go into recently had a There's case of. Uh oh, case her right there. You said who? We're filming a music Yee -yee. video. No, we're filming a music video. video. Yo, they call me Tommy. I'm the baddest rapper. Music video, right? Oh, yeah, hey, how are you? Doing? I don't know if you guys are ready to get or not. Don't go in there. No. Y'all can get arrested. Oh, all right. Okay. So, I'm just, after you people in there got arrested for trespassing on city property. All right, for uh, sure. Do you think the police noticed the bulge in your sweatshirt? Hell yeah. He, he probably looked he in my pocket, Draco. Too. 
I got a basketball. <laughs> so it's like a level five felony apparently if we get caught going in there. Do you guys think that's felony worthy? Exploring nah. somewhere that no one's in? Nah. Hell yeah, cause if your ass died so. then, they gotta yeah, explain. They trouble, so the city owns a building, so if you die in the building, someone can sue the city? Yeah. Do you think a lot of people here are depressed? Hell yeah, I was it's depressed up in this What percentage of the population here would you guess is depressed? 99%. Good, my boy. <laughs> so we've done our fair share of law breaking and rule breaking for this channel, but when a cop directly pulls up and warns us, do not go in there, I'll listen. Especially when you got rappers with promising careers with you, you gotta make sure that they're okay too. We went to go sneak in one last building, but as we were doing so, we noticed across the street something that looked interesting. We decided to go check it out. Sir, can you tell us what, what we're looking at here? All right, so this is Progressive Faith Community Farms, a junior urban master producer classes we have for seven weeks. And then we have them come out here and go from theory to practice. They actually learn urban agriculture and urban farming. That's beautiful. So they're learning how to, you know, we got goats, we got ducks, we got sheep. I'm oh, not sheep. <laughs> goats, ducks, and chickens is what I meant to say. So they're growing all kinds of vegetables over here and stuff like that, so. Now, sir, what got you into farming? Prices went up. And then they was just talking about, yo, you know, this, this food desert and different things like that. So I just want to just learn how to do it myself. So I just start putting seeds in the ground and, and it's so fresh and it's amazing to go in the back and cut your own, cut your own salad, you know, cucumber, tomato, lettuce, and it's just fresh. It tastes different. It just oh. really tastes different. We're doing a story on, I call this kind of America's gangster ghost town a little bit. Okay, you know? okay. It's the most yeah. abandoned city in America. Yeah, it's one of the most abandoned cities. That's why we're trying to revitalize it. And we can repurpose a lot of these lots. We can clean them up, we can repurpose it, and we can have fresh fruits and vegetables grown throughout Gary, Indiana. We can repurpose it, we can bring it back. Was it your parents or your grandparents that were enjoying, like that, enjoying the grandparents. it? So your grandparents were in a prosperous time. Oh yeah. And then shortly oh, yeah. after that, things started it leaving started the city. Started declining, right. Sir, would you want to take us on a tour of the farm? Well, I guess I can show you. Yeah. Elephant Man Podcast Network, subscribe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right here, it's closed right now, but it's the Harmony Fridge. And what we do is we have our fresh produce we put in there. And anybody, day or night, can come in and get food. Right now it's not working. Uh, well, it's working, but there's no produce in there. So we've got fresh cheese in there, Ooh. eggs, everything oh, like man. that. And they can come and pretty much shop for free. So this is uh, Faith Farm CDC. This is Pastor Whitaker. He's in charge of right here. I'm Tommy G. Nice to meet you. Tommy G. Yes, sir. Describe oh, Gary, Indiana. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Oh, okay. So, so tell me about SOB. It's a record label. Okay. We had started a record label. Okay. Signing artists and whatnot. Yeah. Right. These we, are my two artists right artists. here. Y'all the artists. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Manager. Y'all flow? The no, thing you no. said earlier today, what was the one line you Hit just me with it. me about? Nah, don't drive. No, 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 tell me. You can't be no artist if you can't just flow. You're in the wrong business if you, you somebody come up to you and say hit it, and you're like, oh, oh no, nah, I ain't on no, that. No, no. Nah, nah. I use bed. certain lyrics. I okay, wanna... live with whatever you use. We hit you flow. All right, look, I'll say it's messed up. How these kids, they run it well. It's from a city where these shorties raise a child. Daddy ain't been home and you ain't seen him in a well. Only man that turned mama's sad face into a smile. And if you ain't in my gym shoes, can't walk a mile. Cause I got brothers in that cell, they waiting on the day of trial. Home all alone, police knocking at the door and you get scared. Thinking ain't a number you can dial. Let me tell you about the struggle and how this stuff it really is. Mama gone so the oldest watch the kids. Daddy made it happen moving way the feds come and ask you questions. I told him I ain't messing with no pigs like I don't know what he did uh, and really don't know what he is and I like Glocks but if I got to then I'm slammed with the six. Got it out the mud <laughs> I knew I could just have to dig. Tolerate no disrespect you disrespect me blow your wig on my brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how you guys yeah. got to flow man. Nice. Somebody come out nice. Here, but this is this is us man. This is our church. We started this about Nine years ago, this is our ninth growing season. Nine years ago, I knew nothing about growing food. I've been up in Milwaukee with Mr. Will Allen. If y'all don't know Will, y'all need to need to know. Need oh, to off of uh, Silver Spring. Uh, yeah, off of Silver Spring. I've been to his farm and I met him. So he's uh, Mr. Will Allen. He came out here and he helped us. So nine years ago, I knew nothing about putting food in the ground. Knew nothing about how food, how powerful food is to you for medicine. So food can heal you or it can hurt you. A lot of food that's available around here. If you go to most gas stations, most corner stores, most of that is not even real food. It's bad options and it's not yeah. a good way to sustain the body. And so that's where we created this. So inside we got, what, 20 young people? And 16 of them are young men. They're in there now being mentored. That's what it's about. For me, it's about folks that look like me and helping them have some of the stuff that I didn't have growing up. 
Guess what? My son, he's 11. My nephew's 10. SOB Jero. SOB OD. How much? How much they make? 15. 15. Yeah, 15. Yeah. At 10. No, like, like. You feel me? Yeah. An hour with us. An hour. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That's good. yeah. You hiring? I know. <laughs> I, 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 I hear it. I see it. They do nine hours a week for six weeks. Median household income. What you think it is in this neighborhood? We're in Emerson neighborhood. Twenty-eight thousand. Lower. Fifteen. Lower. Twelve. Wow. Twelve thousand dollars. A year. A year. A year. Twelve thousand dollars a year. That young man right there. Now he making twenty dollars an hour part time. He's still living, still real, live right up the street from where we grew up. Took him off the streets and gave him a real time job. Yeah, give him some. Oh man, man, they want to work. Well, yeah, we appreciate take. your message. We appreciate your mission, man. All right, Tommy. Hey, thank yep. you, man. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, clap it up for Miss Frida. All right. <laughs> hey. So what we have growing out here right now are Brussels sprouts. Ooh. That's cabbage, that's kale, that. and you see all those are tomatoes. The front end is green tomatoes, and the second end is red tomatoes. What do green tomatoes taste like? Uh, people like fried green tomatoes. When you have all your Mexican dishes, there's cilantro. Ooh, uh, as cilantro. you go down here, keep going straight ahead. We're gonna go to the animals. 52 chickens, oh, okay. nine ducks, and 20 goats. Oh. Miss Fine is the farm manager. Good morning. Well, good doing? morning. You see the lettuce and everything in there? All the stuff that we grow, we grow organically. These are the baby chicks, if you will. They're not really babies anymore. Here, somebody come grab this. I'm gonna let you put it through the fence. Is that a radish? That was a strawberry. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. Right through the fence. Right through the fence. Right through the fence. Right through, the fence. Right through that hole. Drop it. They'll get it. Come on. They use the bathroom? Oh, we took off. Yeah, of course they use the bathroom. You use. Oh my God. Miss Frida, what got you into farming? Pastor Curtis asked me if I was to do it. I'm a nurse, a farmer yeah. by choice. So I was already in nursing. I know food was medicine. I know food was health. When he asked me would I come out here and do it, I didn't know anything about farming. So I took a master oh, gardener class. We're here with Miss Frida, a shining example of what can happen right in the community. Right in the community in Gary, Indiana. Where can people find this place? It is 656 Carolina, Gary, Indiana. And the phone number is 219-880-0850. Okay, hey, you guys take thank care. Thank you so much. Folks, I think anywhere you are, it doesn't matter if you're in the most abandoned city in America, the slums, a nice part anywhere, action is the ink that writes the story of your life. So if you put seeds in the soil, you put words to paper, you invest your time, your money, your effort, good things are gonna happen for you. That's dope. So remember that, and uh, spread love, positivity, and we'll see you guys next week. Peace. Folks, hope you enjoyed this episode. You wanna watch another? Here. You wanna subscribe? Over here. See you next week.